So hello, everybody. Welcome to TCM Time, Less Traditional Chinese Medicine with me, Kathy Young. Everybody, welcome back to TCM Time. I'm going to start with a big New Year's 2024 hug. So let's bring it in and just open up our chest, our hearts, and our minds, and just relax into our bodies our breath, our mind and spirit. Awesome job, and let's open with big hearts. <laughs> Yay, thank you everybody for being here today. Welcome, today is a free introduction to Tai Chi Sword. Tai Chi, as some of you know, is a really relaxing and traditional martial arts that has movements with originally martial purposes. But these movements nowadays is practiced for health and relaxation. When we start to add what's called a sword to it, a Tai Chi sword, what you see is your energy and your mind start extending beyond your own body and projecting it all the way to the tip with a purpose and intention. So what I like to introduce is Tai Chi sword as a weapon of light. Light to bring in more light into your own heart and your own life. Maybe the enemy that we fight today is actually the darkness that's entrapping some of our own hearts, our own minds, and trapping our own body. So with every movement, I invite you to be cutting through any blockages, anything that's trapping yourself from your inner freedom. And look for the light. So before we begin, I would like to do an acknowledgement of land and people. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land throughout America and recognize their continuing connections to land, water, and communities. I would like to extend that respect to all their elders, both past, present, and emerging and extend that respect to all First Nations, Indigenous or Native people and communities today. So this is really important always to first recognize the land that we are on. This is how we root ourselves and ground ourselves. how we take and connect to what's beyond ourselves. Last year, in 2023, we talked about mental health and raising mental health awareness. This year, in 2024, I'm inviting all of us with a focus on mental health in our children and youth. Start from the ground up, from our own inner child as we grew up. What builds our foundations? What are we standing on? As children and youth, you have a natural connection to everything around you. Your heart is wide open. And maybe as we grow up, as we learn how to navigate this world, we learn how to build certain walls to protect ourselves. Some of these walls get stronger and thicker until we block the own light that's shining from within. Our goal for 2024 is with each practice, Qigong, Tai Chi, Kung Fu, any movement, let's invite each movement to connect with a deeper part of us. You are searching for your original self. 
who were you before you started adding these walls to protect? Are you safe now? Can you let some of those walls down so that you can feel your own love and light and allow that to shine to everybody around us, especially the children and youth? So today's introduction to Tai Chi Sword is really special to me because sword was one of the first things my own father taught to both me and my younger brother. He, we, we were about teenage years, around 10 or 11, and he woke us up at 5 or 6 a.m. As a young child, you don't want to wake up so early, but he would pull us up out of bed and we would practice in either our driveway or backyard. And he taught my brother and I a sequence called San Tai Dui Jian. That means San means tree, Tai means power, Jian means sword, San Tai Jian. When you add a Dui, D-U-I, that means matching. So you'll see in some of my videos or some of my past performances with my younger brother, Nikki, we did San Tsai Dui Jin, the three power sword matching with each other. And it's a way that we can do a friendly fight, brother and sister. <laughs> so coming back, sword is really special to me. I would like to invite all of you, anything can you be used as a sword. So what I'll be sharing you is some of the things I learned from my father and developed on my own as with my own training growing up. So let's begin. I want you to look for any long object in your own house. It can be anything from a pen to a cooking spatula to maybe a back scratcher or shower, something in the shower you might use. I've also got bike pump. You can use an umbrella, let it expand. Anything that will give you an extension so that you're learning how to focus your mind beyond your own body. When it goes beyond your own body, you are learning how to focus. When you focus your intention, you actually learn how to invite your chi, which is your energy, to channel that energy so everything channels in and focuses so you get to a point. So here, this is a massage roller you can use also. Something, if you are a beginner, you might want something lighter. But as you get more intermediate or more advanced, you might want something heavier. So here, I might use a heavier sword that has weight because it trains my muscles the forearm muscles all the way connecting to my shoulders and to my whole body. And slowly as you get even more advanced, what you're looking for is training with something a bit more metal and sharper to get a feel for how that moves and how that cuts. Of course, you don't want it too sharp for training purposes, that's how you end up maybe cutting yourself or somebody else. You can ask my younger brother, Nikki. I've definitely cut him before by mistake. Sorry, Nikki. <laughs> so it's not something you want to be playing with lightly. You treat your sword with respect. My father's master, Master Li, Li Maoqing, always said, respect your sword as if it's your second life. So your life, treat it as something that your life depends on. It changes your whole practice. Not only are you learning just to move, 
but this is what's creating your distance from what's threatening you to protect your own body to keep you alive. See if you could take a moment and just pick up whatever object you have and just practice a little bit of extension of your own mind. Can be a water bottle. See if you can start. Always start with what we call Tai Chi Pong, P-E-N-G, Pong. This is an arc of your body. It's actually a very natural, self-protective posture. So what I want you to do is first find, how do you protect yourself? What's your protective posture? So don't let it come from looking at me. Let it come from your own feeling. How do you protect yourself? Good. As you have your pong structure, take a minute now, start letting it extend. Even your arm has a pong structure. Pong, think of it like two crescent moons. The two crescent moons embrace and support each other like friends. That's the Chinese character for pong, two crescent moons. So see how one arm can be one crescent moon? The other one too. From your two crescent moons supporting each other, slowly extend and just feel that extension first as far as your mind can go. As you're learning to focus, your extending of the mind, what you're going to find is what we call the third eye. The third eye is right above your two eyes, right between your eyebrows. We also call this the heaven eye in Chinese, Tian Yin. Tian is heaven, Yin is eyes, eye. This is your focus point. It allows you like a tripod to steady your own vision so that you're connecting with your inner vision. Allow when you focus to use your third eye to align with the tip of your point. So you might feel it a little bit above your eyebrow. Some people might feel it below. Let it be this whole area until you can find slowly over time your own focus point. Very good, I see some of you picking a point on your wall and actually aiming for that one point.
very good. So what you're learning is starting to build a relationship between you and your own sword. Like I said, anything can be a sword. That sword is just an extension of your body to protect yourself. The next, I'm going to, so we'll go three key points to get acquainted with your sword. The first is just feeling that extension, that third eye and extension. Second, I want you to feel what's called the one third point. In very traditional martial arts, this is the balance point of the sword. A really good, well-made sword balances right on the one third point. So this one, obviously the handle is a bit heavier. So that means the pivot point is probably closer to the handle. But I will still train that one third point because in martial arts, this is the point that allows you to pivot with freedom. See if you can take a finger, hold it on the one third point and allow it to pivot on both ends, circling on the left and the right. See the freedom that can move. From the tip of the sword to the handle of the sword. Good, so try flat, just back and forth on as if it's lying down on a table, very two-dimensionally. You'll be using this flat movement when you slice across. Very good. Try adding more three dimension to it. So now see if you can circle on the right with, if you're right-handed, let your right hand be the control of the handle. And as you're controlling, always feel that pivot point, the one third point. So you can feel two types of directions with your circles. You can go forward, see how I'm pushing the sword forward. This has a more of a yang feeling, Y-A-N-G. Yang is always radiating outward, like the sun. The second, I want you to feel a little bit more of the reverse, the yin side, like yin and yang always balance each other. Yin side has a pulling in feeling. Yin is in. So you see how I'm, my intention is on pulling it inward. So 
to go pivot on the one third point. Good. And take a minute to switch hands to balance it because the stronger both hands are, the better your balance. You always use what we call a secret sword to balance your actual hand sword, the sword with the hand, secret sword. As strong as your secret sword is, is how strong your actual sword hand is. So try switching sides. Also, it balances your muscles and body building structure. And again, try horizontal flat. You try palm down or palm up. Again, feeling what's like yin and yang. And again, yin and yang can become relative. So just get a feel for just the feeling of it. If you haven't tried palm up, you can try palm up. Feel how it changes muscles that you're using and your own body structure. Once you feel horizontally and flat, see if you can try now with the three-dimensional with circling. So again, you can try the yang direction going forward. Learning still pivoting on that one third point. So I invite people who have already experience in this to slow it down, to Empty your cup, that means empty your mind of what you think you already know. So you can make space to advance and fill it with something deeper, something that you haven't felt before. When you slow it down, you are looking for different feelings. Very good. See if you can try reverse. A little bit of the yin feeling coming inward.
Very good. So as we keep emptying our cup with each practice, we begin always learning that we don't actually know so that we can build a deeper relationship with the sword. It's the same when you develop a friendship with somebody. When you think you already know them, it doesn't make space for understanding them on a deeper level. It's the same as you build your relationship with your sword. Empty your cup, empty your mind and heart before each practice so you can learn to become acquainted again with your own sword at a new level. So we've gone over just getting acquainted with your own sword or your own long object. First is just understanding that extension of your own mind with the one third point. Extending that feeling beyond your own body. Second is understanding the weight of your own sword or your long object. Understanding how it moves and how you can change the way you hold it and how that changes how it moves. Third for today to get acquainted with your own sword is understanding the purpose of each section. Think of your sword in three sections. The first third, so I'm measuring it from the handle forward to the tip. The handle is the part that I'm holding my grip. So first think of this, the first third, you have three parts, one third closer to the handle, second third, in the middle of this shaft. The last third is from this point to the tip. In traditional sword, a real metal sword, this first third is the thickest part and it's the strongest part. This part is made to block. As soon as somebody comes or energy comes with full force, the first impact you want is on the one third point. So that's the part that can protect the strongest. So everybody get a feel. Imagine the first third is the thickest part, the strongest part. Let me see a few blocking actions. Imagine my sword's coming towards you and I want you to hold up a block at the one third point, like an X. So you're making an X with my sword. This wooden sword will be your sword and block. Very nice. And it's coming again at you and block. One third point. I'm gonna change my angle, see if you could change with me. From above, still go one third. Oops, <laughs> I have to watch the light in my own room. And make sure you have space in your own house. Be careful for any living thing, living person or animal, and also be careful for your own furniture. <laughs> So you're blocking with the one third point. Keep it horizontal for now to counter my vertical. See how you're making an X, 90 degrees or across. Good, bring in your breath. Every time you make contact, first inhale. As you make contact, fully exhale. So you have the full force to push out, just like you're pushing a car or pushing a heavy door. Inhale, exhale. In, out.
Very nice. Good job, everyone. One more. So I'm going to come at you from this angle. This is harder for my hands. Let me go my other hand. So you're going to come on this side. So I'm coming here and cross. Yeah, very nice. Inhale and block. Very good pong structure, many of you. I see you're on guard. So it's not just your hands, but I see you're on guard. That's awesome. Two more. Inhale, exhale. Yeah, super job. You just got acquainted with your one third point the thickest and strongest part for blocking. Now let's get acquainted with the second half, second third. The second third becomes thinner and able to glide and slide. Think of the second section for sliding. Once you make contact, that impact, you want to slide through. So making contact with the one third and slide. So you want to slide between the one-third and the two-third point. So you can choose anything in your house if you have something to give you resistance. Maybe it's a chair. Something you might not be afraid to scratch up a little bit. So I'm going to use a wooden sword to protect the chair. And here I'm gonna put two stickers on my sword so you can see more clearly the one third point. And a two third point. So imagine this yellow as a one third. And I'm gonna choose a different color in a minute. So let this red be the two third point. So here, let's go from chop from over your head. And you can see I balance it with my secret sword just by my armpit. Secret sword is like, imagine you're holding a peace sign or two bunny ears and you're just holding that together coding the number two and glue it together to support each other. And my thumb is gently pressing over on my middle finger and pinky finger to create a little mini pong. See again, that round structure. Good. So here, secret sword just by my armpit because anytime you extend, you're vulnerable opening your body. Secret sword helps protect that part of your lower body. So I'm coming from a chop from over my head. I'm going to make impact on the one third point. And I'm going to slide through to the second third point. Chop from overhead. You can face it directly, squared your hips, one third. Slide the two three. Inhale, exhale, slide. Continue a few more times. I'm going to change my sticker. So I put a blue sticker at the two thirds. Of course, you do want hopefully one third exactly, but let feel free to give it a little bit of a spectrum. Block and slide. Two 
few more times. Good job. So we're learning now the three points on your shaft of your sword. So you've got acquainted with the first third, the thickest part for blocking. Second third for sliding or gliding for sticking. This Tai Chi sword, Tai Chi is all about sticking with somebody. The last third is the sharpest part of your sword. Traditionally, this part is the part that's sharpest and can cut someone. And you always want to reserve the last third for only the most efficient cases. So you never want to make a cut because as soon as you cut traditionally into another body, it rusts the sword because once it makes contact with moisture, it rusts the sword. So we always use the last third with as much respect as possible. So the last third, think of it, really honor it because I'm not talking about violence here. You're thinking of martial arts in a form of more self of compassion. What you're doing is with the sense, you're not cutting to take away someone's life. You're there, martial arts is there to stop fighting. Traditional Chinese word for martial arts is not Gong Fu. Gong Fu actually means time and energy. That means anything that puts a discipline like music, like dance, like studies. Anything that takes time and energy is Gong Fu. Traditional word for martial arts is wu su. Wu is no or stop. Su is fighting, stop fighting. So when we're making every movement, it's not for intention of violence. It's more a sense of protection and justice, saying, no, somebody's trying to take away your right, your life, your space. And it's just about Compassion saying, no, you're in the wrong and I'm protecting what's right. So use that last third with the utmost of deepest respect for your life and somebody else's life. The last third is for making that cut. So that part has to be fullest of the third eye, that heaven eye connected with your spirit, your life and someone else's life. Make impact. Protective structure. Slide. And cut. When you cut, don't take your mind away. That focus is still there. That spirit and intention. Impact. Slide. And cut. Follow it all the way through. See if you can stick and focus with your own third eye. last time, with your breath and your whole body and being, 
with everything that's in your heart, soul, and spirit. Super job, everybody. Thank you for practicing with me, getting acquainted with your sword, and also to honoring this art and this practice. Today was about introducing you to any long object or long weapon that can be used as a sword. You're building your relationship with the sword, which is your second life. Let it be your birth to a new life. Always empty your cup every day before you practice. Let go of what you think you already know. Today we understood, we tried to get acquainted with picking up a long object. Just feeling how that is an extension of your own body and your own mind. Second, we got used to feeling that pivot point, that freedom of movement on the one third point. This is what makes sword actually one of the highest and most advanced weapons because of this freedom of movement. Last, we got acquainted with this whole shaft, the purpose of each part of the shaft from the one third point, the thickest and strongest to make impact, blocking. The second third for sliding, as it gets thinner and sharper for sliding. The last third, the sharpest and thinnest part of the sword, reserved for with the utmost of respect for life, your life and all life around you protecting, stopping fighting. It's with a sense of compassion when you make that cut. Never with the intention of aggression or violence. It's to stop fighting. Good. So today was just to get you a sense, to just share a little bit of this special art and gift that I got from my father. So it's really special to me, sword in general, because my father, as so many of you know, he's really well known for martial arts. And as a child of his, it's really, it's, it's hard, indescribable when your own father is willing and ready to teach you. So it's something I really hold precious in my heart and in my life. And I really want, I hope that you can feel what it means to me and that it can also mean something so deep and precious for you. And I hope I would like to invite you to on this journey with me. As I begin, I'm going to teach of five day or five classes every other week from next week. Tai Chi Sword, we're going to review the first 25 movements that we've done in previous classes. So the videos are there in the video library if you do want to learn it step by step. But it's going to be mainly a review of the Tai Chi Sword sequence. The sequence has 54 movements and it's from the Yang style of Tai Chi. Just to give you an idea, a little bit of the form. We train the form so that you have a little journey to practice every part of your body and every purpose of each movement.
So I'm going to stop there just to give you an idea of the beginning of the Tai Chi sword sequence. So we'll review those movements together. Please join me. It will be great to shine with this weapon of light together in this new year. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you'll come with me on this journey of 2024 with Shining with More Light. So everybody, thank you so much. Till next time, this is TCM time. Keep letting your health shine. Big hug, everyone. <laughs> Hey everybody, just want to add a little addendum to the training. We had a question and answer after the intro to Tai Chi, Tai Chi Sword class. So a few good questions that were raised that I did want to bring up, but of course it's a, it's a lifelong journey and it takes time to understand all the intricacies, the small details of Tai Chi Sword. One of the questions was during the feeling of the one third point, it's really hard to get a feeling of that. And don't worry if you don't feel it yet. Keep in mind, sword is one of the most advanced and highest arts to master and train in traditional martial arts. We have an expression that it takes 10,000 days or 10,000 times of picking up your sword to really perfect or progress with the art. Yeah. So think of it as each time you're picking it up, you're just learning to get acquainted. You're not trying to get it right away. Let it come to you. So this one third point, let it come with your practice. Rather than trying to control it so much, you're actually learning to feel it. So actually just rather than hold gripply, gripping the handle tight, just try letting go and feeling the weight of the sword at the one third point. So give it time, just let it go and feel how gravity is helping. So that's one question is about, is it difficult to get this one third point? And the answer is yes. Think of it as 10,000 days to, to keep this art progressing. Second question is about the grip of the sword. How, how you grip the sword is going to change how you move the shaft of the sword. So this is one part I didn't get to share, which is talking about how your hand is gripping the handle. In Tai Chi sword, traditionally the handle is longer. And because the sword is longer, Tai Chi likes to make contact and stick. And when the sword is longer, it needs a longer handle to balance it. So one thing is always important when you hold any type of sword is you always want to slide back close to the hand guard. So here, this is the hand guard and the idea is to protect your hand. Anytime you make contact with another sharp weapon or another weapon, it can always slide and hit your hand or cut your hand. So you do want to use a handguard to always protect yourself. Because as soon as you have an injury, you lose your ability to protect. So here, in practice, you will slide. And that's okay, but always try to find your way back to the handguard. Because in traditional martial arts, if you start sliding to the end, and you leave too much of a gap between you and your hand guard and sword. This traditionally is made of wood, the, hand, the handle. So if your handle gets cut, you lose your whole weapon, you lose your sword. So you always want to slide back up, one, to protect yourself, two, so you don't lose your sword. So that's the second question about where your hands should be on the hand guard, the handle. The second is about the grip. Ideally, you want to hold the sword as if you're holding an egg. Think of it as a raw egg. So you don't want to hold it so tight that it cracks, but you don't want to hold it so light that it falls out of your hand. So you want to be able to maneuver and change your grip. 
how you change your grip will affect the impact of your sword. So I'm gripping it with the whole hand. I can release the last three fingers, the pinky, the ring finger, and the middle finger. When I'm holding it with just the thumb and index finger, this gives me speed. Speed, but also the lightness, so the freedom of movement. Once I start to hold the last three fingers, this gives me power. When you have power, you can cut through something thicker and stronger or heavier. You can make a bigger impact. But when you have power, it slows down and it limits your freedom of movement. So as you learn how to train, you learn how to keep changing your grip depending on the movement, depending on the purpose, where your aim is, depending on who you're facing. Each opponent will require different skills of you to protect and to get in. So learning how to change the grip will change how you move the sword. Third question was about, in the beginning, it's about body connection. In the beginning, as beginners, we see the sword moving, so we tend to move only our hands. When you move just hands, this is known as the physical side, the muscle is moving. This is physical muscular movement. Slowly as we advance to more of the intermediate and advanced understanding, we learn how to move from our body. So I end up holding this structure, the pong structure, and I'm using my body, this is called a dantian, the energy center, to move so that my body is behind each movement. It's not separate, it's together. Once you have this connection between your body and sword, you learn to use the internal side of the martial arts. Internal side of martial arts is learning to use your mind to lead the chi, the energy, something known as grand circulation using the chi from your energy center and leading more chi to your arm and even to your sword and beyond. So this becomes less physical movement, less of the external martial arts, but I start to learn to connect and feel, inhale, exhale, leading the chi out. So now I learn to be softer and I can feel more deeper. So this becomes the internal side, the body connection, but also to the mind and chi. So that's a few key points that I didn't get to bring up, uh, but it came up during our question and answer. Last thing is, in traditional days, if you have a sword, a metal sword that's made from stainless steel, that stainless steel, of course, will be heavier so the weight of the sword will naturally fall a little bit more in this one third point. Nowadays, some of the swords are made heavier because this thick part is heavy all the way to the handle, which may be heavy. So with gravity, you actually feel most of the weight falling. If I let go of this sword, it falls more on the handle side. So this is less of a balanced sword. Some of the really well-made swords, that's an art in of itself, is really balanced and very fine balance on the one third point. And you actually learn how to feel it. It feels lighter. It feels like there's more freedom to it. And it takes less physical and muscular movement. So if you do find a really well-made sword, treasure it and treat it with respect. Clean it, polish it, don't let it touch your own skin very often, and actually, and don't play with it. 
don't cut the grass with it, don't stick the sword to have a little sword fight with somebody. Let it treasure it, let it be really to cultivate that art. So thank you for joining me for this little addendum.